Hey everyone, today we will dive into Microsoft Loop together with Dimitri. He published an awesome video about the latest updates of Microsoft Loop. The reason why I came to the video is that I published a video about how you can leverage the Microsoft 365 ecosystem in the best way possible. Many of our Inner Circle members are struggling with their productivity system as they are stuck in Microsoft ecosystem. So they are not allowed to use other tools. However, we show that it is, doesn't matter what tool you use, it's all about understanding Understanding the tool agnostic workflows, the concepts and workflows that you apply to these tools. And therefore we helped many people already to set up their Microsoft system. One thing that never fit really in was Microsoft Loop. Their approach to be the next Notion replacement or actually the idea behind it was really great that they become a Notion-like thing where you can leverage all the other assets in your Microsoft ecosystem. Sounds very promising. I made a video about this when it was announced back then already, but ever since there was not much progress and the setups that we saw from our clients it was rather cumbersome compared to just adding the information directly to teams or something like that but without further ado i haven't watched the video from dimitri you sent it over that he made an update about the microsoft loop and i cannot wait to see what is actually new if it can really help to better integrate with the other tools let's dive in paperless movement your productivity your way you know what's crazy? Microsoft Loop still exists. Yeah, that's right. You haven't thought about it in like a year and neither have I, because who the heck would? No, just seriously, I want to- Yeah, who do I? Exactly. Talk to you a little bit about Microsoft Loop and some of the updates that have come out with this product in the last little while that I've not talked about it. So if I go to the Microsoft community page and I check out the history of changes. Fun fact, you can't access it from a public page. There's actually a forum answer someone put out there and was like, why can't I check out the updates? Yeah, really silly. So let's get started with Loop and check out the product itself. All right, I'm in Microsoft Loop. It took me a while to log in. There seems to be some weird re- And <laughs> I have to laugh because this is what I struggled with with Microsoft as well, with the business version. Setting this up to make some demos places, you know, to show around how these tools work. It is insane how hard it is to log in and to get into it with the authenticator app. It never worked with the code that I had on my phone and things like that. So he is not talking about what the issues were, it seems, maybe later on, but I can 100% relate to this. <laughs> and he seemed pretty annoyed at this point in time where I think that he cut out a big chunk of recording until he actually get in. Same for me when I try to log in. So, well, it's insane that such a huge company gives you so many obstacles to be productive. But let's keep watching. Redirect stuff going on. But anyways, if I go into the workspace, I'm just going to take a look at how the product has changed. If we click the top right and press version history, actually, that's just a version history for the pages changed. Okay. Nope, there's no update to showcase. This news really, they don't really talk about the product. Hey, Twitter, is Twitter where I have to go to tell you what the heck is up with Loop? When's the last time that posted? Oh, July 17th, actually recently. Ooh, this is a big update. Components are now available on Microsoft OneNote Windows app. Loop components are also available in OneNote in Microsoft Teams. So they have made some interesting updates here. I know that many are still using OneNote and I thought they're killing it, but it was probably the old version only and not in general. So this is definitely a huge update if you can integrate these components into OneNote. Where essentially you can add different components from Loop and then that would cross sync not only between your OneNote app, but also your Loop components. So you see this in a lot of different ways. They've had Loop components in Microsoft Teams for a while, but what essentially this is, is it's similar to sync blocks in something like Notion, but it goes across different products. This is something that has been a really good opportunity for them to take advantage of for a while. So I guess a little bit of a sync back and forth between OneNote and Loop is not bad. And there are some other updates that are pretty cool. Let's check this one out. Seems like you can draft a page based on another page and change content using Copilot. So this is what I was wondering for sure. They pretty much integrated Copilot with something like directly adjacent to my- Okay, there's a mix of things. So he just showed there that you can use Copilot, the AI from Microsoft to help you create new pages based on another page. Okay, there is a point to use these components. The thing is really, 
really using content from one system in another system. It sounds so great on the surface, but the question is, aren't you scattering the access points to this information and make it even more confusing for your team than to where to work on and where to look at? Obviously, OneNote is another story there. As you're now in your personal knowledge management, it makes more sense to bring in the team assets and then add additional information to think about this. Maybe that could be a use case. But for the team, mixing things up, you have Microsoft Loop where you have everything and then you have Microsoft Teams and you bring certain parts into Microsoft Teams. So what should the team look at in order to get a better view? Well, let's keep watching. Microsoft's partner, OpenAI. So if I type slash AI, curious if a copilot must be a premium version. What is nice though in the product I'll notice is that at the bottom there is a template gallery now that kind of pops up and showcases everything. So if I click on something like project brief here, I can either use the template and choose to include the content or not, which is a very nice option here. So this is great to showcase dummy content for people. This is definitely a step up from something that Notion has where you don't really have the option to showcase it to others and then add or remove the content. So for me, this is great for example videos if I want to showcase the functionality. Once I press include content, I then can go through and make adjustments here. It is pretty similar to Notion in a lot of regards. I was pretty harsh on it when it originally came out. Well, it's a minor thing that you can show with and without content. And I agree, this is really useful because something I don't like is uh, adding templates. Also, I never use any templates except our own templates, which are very basic. It's always hard because templates are very complex and with a lot of pre-filled data that you need to remove and need to understand. So having this way to, as he said, you can showcase his own templates, for example, in Notion. Dimitri has some nice Notion templates available and he could showcase this now in Notion with the data, but with a click, you would start from scratch. That's really something useful, I guess. I think so too. Interesting features that exist that do not exist in Notion are things like the row height, the tall and short row height, I think is interesting. I don't really notice much of a difference, but if that functionally would work, it'd be great. It does have some minor UI UX differences, like there's not an open hover button here. You have to go to the top right, and then it will open up the page and you're able to type out here. It has that nice markdown functionality with the forward slash checklist, date selection, everything that you'd expect out of a nice note-taking experience. And when it comes to fields, it's still pretty limited in comparison to other products, but a label is always a good thing. It does give you some example groups. You can make your own one, but I think it's nice that it has things like uh, priority. That's good. Doesn't seem to create it from scratch, which is intriguing. So I press that, I go to label Kanban. I selected. Interesting. It doesn't give me those direct options. So we'll they were simply just empty custom fields that uh, were created there. So it's strange. What was the point? I guess maybe it just gave me examples or that's a bug that seems to be a bug, to be honest, because I don't understand what the point of me selecting priority is. If it did, okay, it then worked when I changed it. That seems like a bug. Okay, so that's something to, to note. Priority does exist with like low, medium, and high. You can change those, delete options. I like this addition. A couple things to note about columns. They are pretty fluid to move and to change the size and stuff. And that's where loop components come in really well. If you add these tables to like a Teams chat and you're trying to fill out a table or a questionnaire, they are really good. Same with the voting field, which I think is cool, where you can essentially vote on something. And if enough people upvote something, you can see who voted on it and that's really nice overall ui ux though not a lot has really changed but the voting is really something that we would use in the idea incubator that we teach in icore where we have in clickup actually our ideas inside a list and then we give it prioritization based on chance to be a successful idea, things like that. And therefore, a voting would be really useful. There is this little bit of an ideas page that I believe wasn't there before. But overall, switching between workspaces is cool. You can like go between multiple different workspaces. Like this is just the getting started page. This could be used for different aspects of a company and you could invite people specifically to these workspaces. But just to be clear here, you could build up in Microsoft Loop a business knowledge management system as we call it. And it's separate from your personal knowledge management system. So now if we combine this with OneNote, that sounds like something that could be possible. But here that should be the place that people go to too as 
Dimitri just demonstrated here, to find the information about the company, the general information about the team, something like these things, so people immediately know where to go to. Also, you could have a list of work instructions or SOPs in there, obviously, and that's where, with all the different options Microsoft offers, it makes hard to pick really the right things. And in bigger companies, different teams pick different options. So for example, some people store Word documents on a SharePoint in order to have this SOPs there. Others have it then in Microsoft Loop. Others again have it in Microsoft Teams. It's really messy if these things are not defined. And these are business processes. Usually always have great documentation about their expertise and all the things that they need to do. But when it comes to productivity, documentation and the process optimization, it's always lacking. And this is due to uncertainty how to leverage the Microsoft tools in the best way possible. I find intriguing. So if you have people in different departments or you just want to invite everyone to an HR workspace, definitely something to try out. But a lot of the updates that have happened on this product, it seems like are all being acknowledged on Twitter, which I know is the case, but I don't really like how they don't just have like a what's new page, but I do like the Kanban view. So let's take a look at when I do backslash, what other views exist that maybe didn't prior. So if I do backslash, you'll notice that there's a bunch of templates, which is cool regarding like views. So team retrospective, what's that gonna look like? Oh, seems like it's a Kanban view. So they have tables and boards now. They had tables prior. I do not believe they had boards. So this is a great addition. They're slowly rolling it out and slowly stealing the ideas from all the other products that have been doing the same thing for years. Sorry, I had to get my one jab in. But yeah, and that's why I love your humor, man. Yes, I'm 100% with you. And I also question something that we always emphasize in ICO as well to differentiate, to separate information and action. I mean, separate in a way that you know the single source of truth where you need to go to to understand what is the action that I need to do. And when you need to do the action, where do I find the information in order to complete this action? By mixing things up like this, people set up pages where they have a project page maybe, and then they and a Kanban board in order to track progress of this thing. But you never get a holistic view on what else is going on for these people in a company. And that is really the problem where people are always overworked because they're working in several projects. I mean, I'm coming from corporate. We worked in 150 projects with five people in parallel. Can you imagine that? It's impossible. And it was impossible. But just by showing these things, it was then possible to improve things. Usually people just have a feeling they're overworked. They have no idea why well these are one of the reasons that everybody just builds these things up from scratch from a gut feeling creating a kanban board and let's track it in there and well everybody else has to look how they manage their own tasks and they're back at the desk but anyway let's keep watching i'll take this board movement for those who never experienced this in the microsoft ecosystem outside of planner i'm sure this is a step up considering planner is three scoops of buttocks and i just wanted to show you one of <laughs> That's the thing, you know, the Microsoft Planner. Well, they separate our action and information for sure, because in Planner you cannot do a lot. You assign tasks to people and then it is out of context because it's not connected with teams. To me, I don't know how to, to say that or put this into words, but all these tools in Microsoft they're just lacking features and it always feels like people at Microsoft really don't use these tools for productivity. Probably they're all using Jira and Confluence as their IT people doing it. I don't know. I uh, didn't speak to them. If you're one of a Microsoft employee and you're working on these things, let us know in the comments below. Interesting to hear about the thought process. To me, Microsoft Loop really looks like there was somebody in the company who said, man, there's Notion around for years now and people using it and we are not able to connect our information into one place. We have to really come up with something new and this is the result now. And now the project maybe was finished and there was not enough funding and people have to go through politics in the, in the company in order to push this further. It's a bit half-hearted. Let's keep watching. One of the most unique things I found, which is actually a uh, Q&A functionality. So if I type backslash, you'll notice one of the templates here is Q&A session, which is pretty cool. So you can have this be like, what's your favorite color? Where did you grow up? 
And as you would imagine, you could, for example, make this a intro questionnaire to your team, right? Like team intros slash icebreakers and share this with the team prior to the first meeting. And I would say something like red or black is actually my favorite color nowadays. I feel like I grew up saying red, so now I just always say it. What did I grow up? I grew up in... Well, it's an interesting approach. In the end, it's uh, creating a thread about this topic there and if you're a big team this becomes a long list for sure it is something i can imagine becomes a bit messy because these questions might be open-ended questions and people write whole paragraphs in there i don't know how much this is of use which something i could do easily in microsoft teams and creating a thread in there with these different things and ask people to answer but it is <laughs> another feature i don't know if you ever would use this south suburban chicago well, if you use it, let us know in the comments below and how useful this is to you. And you'll see who answered it, hover over, you'd see their email and their name. And then from there, you know, that would be a nice icebreaker situation. I find this one more intriguing than most of the features in here because everything else, I won't lie, is pretty copy paste. There's not like a whole uniqueness to this outside of the fact that it does integrate with the loop components cross application. I guess a small thing to note is that you can actually work with people outside of your organization now by giving them page links, which is pretty big because when it comes to these different things, you know, having third party access to, you know, Google Sheets, for example, and even in this case, you know, those public Excel links, even if they're not in your organization, that's pretty big. So I, I didn't realize that you couldn't actually share this with people outside of your organization as a guest. That's kind of crazy that that wasn't a thing before, but I mean, shout out to Loop for adding that recently. This product overall does seem like it has enough components to where I could do a lot more reviews on it. I could showcase all the functionality of this wannabe notion. So if anyone does have interest in me going through a application that would be willing to reference NSYNC and 90s boy bands in their Twitter to try to stay relevant. Oh, man. I don't know in what world do we live that these companies, I mean, it's the same with the new Apple intelligence that they Siri finally got a brain and it's still an insect brain that she got there. At least she got some now and Microsoft tries to catch up as well. I don't know if they wouldn't be that big and so widespread in all these other corporates that people rely on this. And now we have this incident with Microsoft as well. It is crazy, but this is how big corporates work. With that being said, thank you so much for listening to me rant and rave about a product that is mid at best. You're very welcome, Dimitri. And I think we should talk in an interview about these things. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Let's give him the last word. I'll see you in the next one. And I see you in the next one too. Bye-bye.